Good afternoon, my name is Ernie Little. I'm presenting a virtual clinic on the NMRA's Master Builder Cars Achievement Program. Today is Sunday's August 16th. And the certificate itself is basically very easy to do. Easy depending upon how you look at it. The requirement for this program is to build eight cars. Four of these have to be scratch built. They all need to be highly detailed. There has to be four different types of cars presented, one of which has to be a passenger car. And the last thing is the four of them have to achieve a merit award, which is basically of the 125 possible points, we have to get 87 and a half points. There's a lot of reasons that I've heard that we don't uh, do the AP program. I've heard people saying that uh, it's wasted modeling. Boy, the judges, the judging just scares me. The judges are tough. Scratch building is not my thing, and it's just too darn much paperwork. Well, bottom line to all this is that in my opinion, that that's horse poop for $2 and three for $5. The bottom line is, is to understand what the requirements are. And before you start into this program, you need to understand what the requirements are and, and develop a plan to get there. When I did mine, I decided to build four cars at once. I don't know what I was thinking. But I had started four cars. I'd work on one, let the glue dry, start another car, work on it. And I just proceeded through the four cars. Once again, I'm not too sure what I was thinking. The hard part that I had to, to understand was the fact that the impact of commercial parts was going to affect the grading or the scoring or the judging of the cars and finding usable plans. I was doing a lot of research, had a tough time trying to find usable plans. I could find plans that were sketches but didn't give me dimensions. Uh, I could find other plans that were sketches that gave you somewhat of an idea. I was thinking about building a Densmore car. This was a vertical tank car, a wooden tank car in the 1860s. It was used up in uh, Pennsylvania to transport oil. I could find a patent. I could find a sketch of the car, but I could not find anything giving me dimensions or size of the wheels, couplers, and such that could really give me a guide as far as what it can model. And the biggest thing was knowing when it was time for me to call for some help. Uh, I'm like many other people. I like to do things on my own, but I need to understand there's a time when you need to call your friends, your railroad buddies, and there's a time to call the EP chair and say, can you help me? I've got a question. If you got a question, you need to, uh, to get that question out there and, and get to it. That's the only way you can proceed. Some other things I learned was looking for judging opportunities. Uh, my friend uh, and AP judge Matt Thompson had told me that you can judge a car more than one time and my first merit car, the tank car, took two judgings. My second one was a gondola. It took three judgings but uh, that was good. So looking for judging opportunities. Uh, rebuilding or improving models that you've built. Look at the comments that came back from the judges and do the things they ask you to do and resubmit it for judging. Slowing down. I'm a, I'm a good uh, uh, rough carpenter, I think, in my opinion, but as far as being a finished carpenter, I'm not the greatest. I have a tough time with uh, getting things to be very nice. And with the cars here, car builds, Rough carpenters are going to have a hard time because they're trying to do a craftsman's job. That would be a finished carpenter, if you will. It's a little bit on the tough side sometimes. So Ernie's rules, uh, basically measure three times, cut once, then trim it again. Take your time. Make sure that everything's accurate. That's going to be a big part of the construction score. Uh, understanding the different types of adhesives that are out there, glues that are available. And depending upon what uh, material you're using, whether it be wood or plastic, uh, you want to have the correct uh, adhesive. I found myself using a lot of something called grill glue gel, and that was a, a very good adhesive. And it being in gel form, it gave me time to be able to get a part down and uh, move it around a little bit before it wasn't fixed versus 
using something, some sort of a CA that as soon as it touches plastic, bam, it's down and now you gotta make another part and tear things apart, it doesn't work very well. You need a little bit of time sometimes to get the part to the right place. And uh, the other thing that uh, rule was that, uh, you know, keep your working space clear. Uh, I found myself with tools and everything getting close up to me a lot and I've moved something and next thing I know the, uh, Vial of super glue or glue on the workbench uh, would be spilt. That's all over my parts, and well, you know the story there. Uh, a word about judging uh, merit judging is not a contest. Uh, contest judging is basically choosing a winning model, uh, where AP judging is recognizing and rewarding a good model build. Uh, judged to a defined standard is AP judging, can be done on your layout. We'll talk about more about that in a minute. And prejudging and rejudging. Uh, you know, if, before you judge a, uh, have your model judged, you could contact your AP or one of your uh, AP judges that uh, you know is out there and say, uh, "Do you have some time I can come by and show this to you and give me some guidance as to whether I'm on the right uh, track or not." Uh, so prejudging, rejudging, of course, would be bringing the back average from scored after you've made the corrections. Uh, contest judging uh, is, is a spelling bee. Uh, in merit award judging, it's not a spelling bee. It's more like a spelling test. So 87 and a half points is what you're trying to get on your score. It's 87 and a half out of 125. That's 70 percent to get an achievement award. Who are these judges? Well, they're the local model railroaders or your railroad buddies trained by the judges, guided by, guided by that uh, AP staff that's out there for home judging. You can expect two to three people. You want to be ready for them. Have your documentation ready. Have a judging space somewhere they can meet and look at your uh, your models and uh, give them plenty of light and the like. And uh, you know, one way to learn what judges do is to volunteer to judge. Uh, merit awards. Well, they're special awards, and they're either going to be done at national, region, or division contest or uh, by two or more specialized uh, evaluators appointed by the region or divisional AP in an agreed upon location at your region or division. That could be your house, could be another location. And uh, in today's world, this COVID-19 thing is going on right now. There's also some discussion about uh, there being a virtual judging. It's still up uh, in discussion. I don't think they've resolved it yet. So a merit award uses uh, AP judging guidelines we're gonna talk about in a minute. And the objective is to get 87 and a half points. And you need four of these merit awards. Four of your cars have to get merit awards of the eight to be able to get the uh, AP certificate. So what are these merit award factors? Well, there's five of them. Construction, detail, conformity, finish and lettering, and uh, scratch built. Uh, all of them have a point range from zero to 40 for construction. That's Zero to 25 for detail, zero to 20 for conformity, zero to 20 for finish and lettering, and zero to 15 for scratch build. Construction is a big one. You now, building something that's uh, correctly constructed and uh, is done the way it would have been built in the prototype. Detail is another biggie. Those two are, there's a lot of points there. So, what's scratch built? Scratch built uh, is, carries an implication that uh, the builder has accomplished all the necessary layout and fabrication, which will establish the final dimensions, appearance, and operating qualities of the scale model. It doesn't prevent the use of any jigs as long as the builder alone has done the work necessary to make the part. That's where 3D would uh, 3D printers might come into play. It includes drawings or computer files to compute to take care of the computer numerical control, CNC automatic lathes, laser cutting machines, 3D printers, and other tools. So if you've gone through the fact of making a plan and then printing it, that, that can make it scratch built, in my opinion. We also talk about basic shapes or the builders, things the builder uh, of prototype would use as raw material, scribe siding, brick sheets, and scale lumber. Ladders such as casting doors and windows typically are not basic shapes. But then again, if you make them, that's a different situation versus purchasing them. A model is considered scratch built, and this is completely scratch built, that's what that should say. And if we have 90% of the parts, then that's considered to be completely scratch built. 
there is the uh, judging category scratch building 15 points that which all the points uh, parts of the device are uh, or the car are fabricated from basic wood metal plastic uh, credits given for quantity quality is judged otherwise and other uh, factors so here's the judging schedule looking at uh, scratch building and it has two groups and one has 11 to 15 points can be awarded the other one is zero to 10. So you want to be in that group one area if you can't where everything is scratch built except for the trucks, couplers, brake fittings and lettering. And if you're not there, then you can be in group two, but you can see that's five points you're going to give away pretty quickly if you were to start using commercial parts versus making something. Then you got the paperwork. Well, this is your chance to tell the judges what you did and how you did it. Division, region, and national uh, officials will review your paperwork and uh, what you did. You're going to be judged on what they see as well as what you wrote. Uh, since many entrants are better uh, modelers than writers, and we're not trying to get a Pulitzer Prize here. We're just trying to tell the judges how we did something and uh, uh, what we did. The CAR AP certificate always uses a statement of qualification form. This is the uh, form for judging, the judging form. This can be downloaded from the NMRA website. Uh, when you're going to have your judging done, you'll need to download a copy and print one and then fill it out. You want to put C attachment in those various areas there and use attachments to provide more information. Just flat is not enough room to describe uh, those five, six items. There's five items there that, uh, that need to be described. The judging form, keep it simple. Uh, know what your model description requirement is from uh, the NMRA and, and describe your model. Uh, ID scratch built features, make sure you got that in your list. You wanna list those commercial components and list materials used in building the model. Uh, use the merit award form to organize the, the text. And I'm uh, sorry, uh, descriptions and diagrams are not the uh, model press articles and they are not modeling instructions. We're basically just saying what we did and how we did it. So keep it bulleted, use as many photos, a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, cut and paste, if you've got one car is built and you got another car that's just like it, you can cut and paste. There's nothing that says you can't build two identical cars of the eight. So you could theoretically build four of the same car. Don't overthink it. Uh, list not only the uh, itemized by the uh, brand name, model number, or precise quantities. And document as you go. I suggest that you're building the car, take pictures and document you know, what you use so it makes it a little bit easier to put it together at the end. Here's an example of my documentation for my uh, Hogshead tobacco car. Uh, two of the pages, we're showing a picture here we found off the internet uh, of the car that I modeled. Uh, I listed the car components and also uh, talked about how the car was constructed. Now, this was a 10 page document, and you're looking at two of the pages. But the photos illustrated uh, what I was trying to do. I used bullets, and like we said before, documenting as you go. So, the first car I built was a, a scratch built uh, wooden t tank car, and uh, it was built on an article from uh, the Combat Book. And I used basswood cut in needed shapes and uh, took two judging attempts to achieve a merit award. You got a picture of the book there and a picture of the article. This is the first car I built and my first merit car, but it did take two judgings. Uh, construction, 40 points. The car on the left, the car on the right. The one on the left is first submission, the car on the right is second submission. Seven point difference, but when we look at construction, if we look at the, uh, for example, the ladder rungs, uh, very big on the left-hand car, much smaller on the right-hand car, so it's more tip part of typical. Uh, the lettering, mm -hmm. big difference there. Big difference there also in the fact the way the lettering, uh, if you will, fades into the background. Detail-wise, uh, correct back package. When the first time I had this thing judged, I had a K break on, I had an AB break on it rather. And you're supposed to have a K break. Uh, put cut levers on it the second time. They didn't have the first time. So it made a big difference in uh, the detail. 
There's also uh, brake shoes that you can't see here. They were introduced. Conformity, 25 possible points. Well, first judging, you've got 20. Second time, you've got 19. We're fairly consistent there. No big differences. But the color, the color, reading the article, is supposed to be Tuscan red wide, used a golden oak stain. That was a mistake in two ways. First of all, for the decaling, the decals did not go into that stained goods very good versus it on the uh, painted the car on the right hand side. It did much better. Finishing lettering, five points versus 10 points. The finish of the lettering, the lettering being done properly, uh, getting into the background, uh, fading into the background, making a difference in the points. Scratch built, 13 points, 15 points. I got all the scratch book points on the second judging. So in first judging, I had 72 of the 125. Didn't get the uh, it was super detailed, but it was not able to get a merit score. Second time, I got my construction points up. The uh, detail was up. And I got 91 points. They got the uh, merit award. Second car was a gondola car built once again from another article. Used basswood, cut the shapes. Took three judging attempts to achieve the merit award. Uh, had some issues with this car. Uh, here you look at the judging. If you look at the walls, the thickness of the walls between the first and the third judging, then the, the original submission I had used uh, wood uh, mounted on plastic, made the walls too thick. As we came down to the third submission, that's now plastic. Makes much thinner, so it's more like the prototype than being uh, oversized uh, thickness. Uh, also, a difference in the uh, cut levers and such that were provided, but the construction was a big deal. Detail points are about the same between the three judgings. Conformity 18, that's where we get into the sidewall as part of that, but also the way that the uh, lettering and all is on there, that is part of the way that was on the prototype. Finishing the lettering, got 20 points out of 25. It's improved, and once again, it's the decaling and, you know, weathering doesn't make a big difference here, but I, I just felt like I wanted to weather the cars. Scratch build, got 15 points on the final. So that was a big thing. Uh, so I started out with 71 points in the first, 79 in the second, almost there. Third time, I had 90 points and got the merit score. The Reading Combine car was a kit. I got 64 points in the first judging. Uh, it, it counted as a passenger car and a super detailed car, but I didn't get enough points. I detailed the inside of the car, but it's very difficult with a kit to get uh, the, the merit score, just due to the number of details that the manufacturer provides. Uh, it was judged twice. It became a, a super detailed car Plenty of interior details. I mean, I've got uh, boxes in there. I've got passenger cars. I've got shades on the windows, as you can see. There are uh, luggage racks, lights, the whole thing inside. But I just could not get the points. And I finally stopped with the uh, second judging of 79 points and just moved on because I realized it would be difficult to get the additional points. This was probably my disaster car, the fourth car I built. Once again, a uh, Kalmbach uh, magazine article. Uh, it was a disaster. Looking at it, you can see the quality of the build, the way the door is hung, the ladders are way too big, the uh, stirrup is not uh, very well done there. Just a lot of bad things. 55 points and uh, also a lot of adhesive all over the place. And I just uh, cut my losses and moved on and realized that I could get super detailed for it, but that's the best I could do. That moved me into uh, some Ambroid kits and I used the uh, plans that were in the kit, uh, replicated the wooden parts with styrene plastic. And the only thing I used on this uh, build here was the hatches and dump chutes, uh, mirrored score on the first. And you can see that uh, I bought this thing for a whopping uh, $5. What a deal for the kit five dollars for the plans and here's an example of the plans themselves perfect they were detailed they were ho scale and a lot of detail plenty of dimensions and we can also uh, look at the brake detail 
on the left versus what I did. And uh, that's before it was painted. After it was painted, it looked very close to what we looked at on the left-hand side in the uh, drawing. 35 points of 40 for the construction. Uh, 20 points for the of the 20 for detail. 22 of 25 points for conformity. The, the ladders are a little big. It's one of the problems I had. Finishing lettering, 25 points. I got 15. It could have been a little bit better. Uh, I was having some difficulty with the decals. And 10 of 15 points for scratch build. But it still came out at 102 total points. Uh, it was my third merit score. And uh, maybe I learned something from the uh, the first four cars. This scratch built uh, Southern Hogshead tobacco car was my uh, next build. Once again, it was an Ambroid package. Uh, replicated the wooden parts with styrene. Didn't use anything from the kit itself. Uh, merit score on the first judging. And uh, well, I paid $10 for this set of plans. Here's the plans themselves. Plenty of information about the underbody. It's a lot of detail on that underbody. Uh, it was an HO scale plan. Again, it was a perfect plan to use. I also had a second sheet that had a lot of information on wood sizes and shapes that could be used on other builds. So I got 32 of 40 uh, construction points. Detail, I got 20 points. Uh, I got 18 of the 20 points. I got 25 of 25 points on conformity. One of the big things about this car is uh, that overhead door. Uh, very few railroad cars had overhead doors, but when these first were built, they had overhead doors. But they did away with the overhead door after one or two years and transmit the regular doors because of maintenance problems. And also, this is one of the few cars to see that has skylights. This car was 96 feet long, 12 feet tall, and 9 feet wide. So it was dark inside, so they needed the skylights. And that was a little bit of a challenge for the build to figure out how to do that. But I enjoyed building this car a lot. Finishing the lettering, I got 25 points. Got maxed that out. Got 10 points of 15 for scratch building. You can also see the extended couplers on each end that was of the prototype. So I had 105 points total, and this was my sixth car I built, my fourth merit award. So the pressure was off, I could move on. So if I look at my four merit cars, the wooden tank car, cylindrical hopper, uh, gondola, and hogshead, these four cars were all scratch built. And they all got the uh, 87 and a half or more, so they got the merit certificates. Then my other four cars uh, were highly detailed. The two on the right, the Mather stock cars are uh, Proto 2000s. They're kits, but since I already had my merit scores, I didn't need to do anything more than I just needed two more highly detailed cars. And the Proto 2000 kits in the build, and I also made some modifications uh, to them. Uh, and I also had to make some parts because one of the kits did not have uh, some of the parts that I needed to complete the car, so I had to hand build them. So that gave me some scratch build for it. But uh, those are the eight cars. So that's uh, what I have to present to you today. Uh, if you'd like, you can go to my website, uh, Norfolk Southern Connector rr.weebly.com. And on there, you'll find a uh, link that goes to the NMRA Achievement Program. And inside that link on that page, you'll find uh, my submissions I made for the various uh, builds that I did. That's what I have for today. Thank you for attending. Have a great day.